from our virtual studios in the Netherlands. And of course, Camarillo, California. It's time once again for The Marketing Geeks, the show where we get geeky about stuff. That's right. In fact, we get so geeky that we'll probably even talk about Star Wars trailers and Terminator films and I don't know what else happened this week, but things are going down. Avengers Endgame is almost here. I've got my tickets. You got your tickets, Andres? I don't. I've I've shaped the family. But we do have a hell of a show for you. Uh, We uh, have an incredible... This is probably one of the higher profile guests that we've had. I would say this is the highest profile guest up to this point. We have the incredible, the magnificent, the wonderful... John Lee Dumas will be on the show, so get ready for an incredible, a breakthrough, a fantastic episode and interview with the one and only entrepreneur on fire, John Lee Dumas. We're the marketing geeks. Hey, everybody. Uh, Yeah, so uh, John Lee Dumas uh, is uh, an entrepreneur and a podcast host and an author uh, I, uh, I'm told he's a very big deal from, uh, what I understand. And, uh, no, he is. And, and, uh, we were fortunate enough to, uh, take a moment out of his busy schedule. And, uh, while I was futzing around with my mic, trying to get it going, uh, Justin was able to start a fantastic interview with him. So, um, before we do that, we're going to, uh, have democracy and, uh, capitalism in action as we pay our bills, so stand by. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, John Lee Dumas has a website called eofire.com. He is uh, the host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's a podcast where he interviews uh, inspiring entrepreneurs and uh, takes you on the entrepreneurial journey. He's also very upfront about how much income he makes with his ad revenue. So he uh, allows you to learn those techniques. So uh, we were able to schedule an interview with him. Yeah, and John, John's going to talk about that in the interview. He's going to talk about uh, where you can go to actually see his income stream. He'll show you where his revenue is, where his expenses are. He said for the past 64 months, he's made over six figures uh, net profit per month. So he's doing okay. He's doing something right. He's doing better than we are. I mean, come on. Um, but John was featured in the new Gary Vaynerchuk book, Crushing It. He was one of the uh, chapters featured his story in there. And he is a he's becoming a bigger and a bigger deal in podcasting. I would say he's one of the top five influencers in podcasting as far as if you're if you're on the side of marketers and business. Um, but without any further ado, I want to introduce you to John Lee Dumas. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Boom. What's going on, brother? How you doing, John? You know, Puerto Rico, sun is shining, our birds are <laughs> singing, life is good. Very nice. Very nice. So uh, I usually have a co-host, but uh, apparently he is busy. I don't know. He didn't show up. So that's fine, though. We'll do this. There's just the two of us. We'll do this as a one-on-one. All right. Uh, So I just want to get into it. So, um, you know, as far as in my community, you're kind of a household name already in my in my little niche community. Uh, But I know that you're still not that well known to the general public. Uh, I just wanted to know, like, how much bigger did you get after being featured in Gary Vee's book, Crushing It? And like, what kind of um, what kind of doors did that open up for you? I wouldn't say it opened up any doors, to be honest, but it really um, did and continues to expose me to a lot of people because he definitely moves a lot of copies of that book. So specifically on Instagram, I would say I'm get, I get messages still all the time. And it's, you know, probably been close to a year now since the book went, went uh, live of, you know, I heard about you on crushing it, wanted to follow you and check out what you have going on and listen to your podcast. So definitely brought me a lot of listeners, definitely brought me a lot of uh, social media followers and definitely just kind of brought me a lot of credibility for people that are like, okay, you know, like he, Gary chose like 15 entrepreneurs to feature 
and JLD is one of them. And I was actually the very first person he mentioned in the intro of the book as well. And the only person he mentioned in the intro, which was really cool too. So it was just, a, it was a great opportunity. I was really honored for it because I've been a big Gary uh, Vaynerchuk fan and follower. And, um, and, you know, I've interviewed him a few times as well. So it's just, it was a really cool experience to be part of that book because um, Crush It was actually a book that's helped me in a lot of ways back in like 2009, 2010 when I read it. And to kind of like 10 years later, be part of crushing it was a really kind of cool full circle experience. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't discover Gary Vee till about 2014, but I mean, ever since then, I've just been eating up all his content. So eat it. <laughs> yeah, he's eat it up. awesome. And you've already, by the way, you've already eaten up all of his content because he only says a, a handful of things. A few That's things. right. Patience, hustle, long-term thinking. But the yeah. thing is, he says that. And he's right. And he's right. He's like, listen, why would I talk about things that I'm not a believer in or an expert in? And I mean, I'm not too different in a lot of ways in that, in that as well. Yeah. So uh, I want to talk about the podcast. Um, I mean, pretty much all my questions are going to be around the podcast. So I, like when you got started with this, uh, were you always like a content grinder? I mean, were you, cause I mean, you, you came into podcasting, you saw an opening to where there weren't a lot of business podcasts out there that were doing daily shows. Was that something that you were, were you blogging daily before this or what, what were you doing before podcasting? What, um, and how difficult was you, was it for you to do the first kind of big daily business podcast, finding the guests? Like how, how was that back then? So I was not a content grinder in any way, shape or form. In fact, entrepreneurs on fire, the podcast was my first venture into anything entrepreneurial before that. I was an officer in the army for eight years. I went to law school, corporate finance, commercial real estate. So I was a grinder in those fields. I was always a hard worker. And that's just kind of my personality, kind of like an all or nothing. I'm either going to go all in or just like, I'm not going to do anything. I'm either going to be like the laziest person in the room or the hardest working. I'm not going to be anywhere in the middle. And I'm oftentimes, by the way, the laziest person in the room in a lot of scenarios, period, because I just decide to be. Yeah. Um, but when I decide to go all in, I want to go all in. And that was just me consuming content, reading books like Crush It and other, you know, four hour work week books and just saying, you know, hey, I think this entrepreneurial thing could work, listening to podcasts, loving them, and then saying, hey, I'm all in on podcasts. Where's that daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs? Didn't exist, saw the void, decided to be the first person to move in, which guess what? When I launched the podcast, I was the best daily podcast interviewing successful entrepreneurs. I was the worst business podcast interviewing entrepreneurs seven days a week. I was the only daily podcast interviewing successful entrepreneurs. And that's the best part about finding a niche that's not exposed and exposing it. That's awesome. So when did you first monetize the podcast? Did, did you wait a while before you uh, started putting ads in it? Did you, did you start that way? Or did you start with affiliate links only? What, what did you start with in terms of monetization? I didn't make any money for the first seven months. Then I started getting a couple coaching gigs from the podcast itself of other people who were thinking about starting their own podcast. Um, and then I started getting sponsorship inquiries at about seven, eight months in for um, companies that actually wanted to sponsor the show to get in front of my listeners um, and to just kind of go down that road to expose their business, their brand, their products, their services. So it took about that long, um, but still it wasn't super lucrative at first. And it you know, took um, 13 months before I kind of really financially broke into meaningful revenue. Like I think the first 12 months we did like $27,000, $28,000. But then month 13, we hit over $100,000 in revenue just for that month. Um, and that's net. I'm talking about net revenue. Wow. And then every month for the past 68 months now, we've netted over six figures in revenue every single month. And for details about that, we've published monthly income reports at eofire.com. So you can go see how we made every penny we've ever made, how we've spent it, the mistakes we've made, the successes we've had. We've listed it all out. Yeah, I saw that. And I was looking at March, um, because that was the most recent one you posted there. And it looks like your numbers were down. You only made $155,405. So that was, must have been disappointing. Tough month. On, on $27,000 roughly in expenses and for a net of one twenty-seven. dollars But yeah, you were down $40,000 for the month before. So yeah. We're, we're, we're trending. We're trending. I mean, less, less steak dinners or less, uh, less massages. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> less time at the poker table. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I do spend time at the poker table every Friday. Oh, you do really? I, mm -hmm. I love poker. I'm a Texas Hold'em player. Ditto. Uh, I still, I live in uh, Ventura, California. Well, I'm in uh, Ventura County. So we have a card room right here. It's like oh, cool. 15 minutes and go play. 
<laughs> it's fun stuff. So uh, let's talk a little bit about growing your audience. Um, I see currently you're spending about $1,000 a month on ads. Are, are those on... Oh, there's my co-host here. Are those on, uh, on Facebook? Are those on... Um, where, where are you spending the money on the on ads? Um, you know, it always differs. I mean, it just depends if we're running a JV. Like for instance, this month, we're going to drop some serious coin on ads because I'm going to be one of the top affiliates for Tony Robbins' launch called the Knowledge Business Blueprint that he's coming out with um, on April 30th. So, you know, we'll drop like minimum of 10, probably $20,000 on ads and j just make that happen, which would be really cool. Andros, why don't you mute yourself over there so we don't hear you banging around. Does that sound good? <laughs> <laughs> and so do about $20,000 in ads and, uh, you know, really just get the word out to, to make sure that we're one of those top affiliates for that. But then the, the following month, we might spend nothing on ads. So it's just really kind of dependent month to month on what we're promoting. If we're JVing with anybody, if we want to run extra ads to podcasters paradise for any number of reasons. So mm -hmm. very launch dependent. Well, there we are. Hello, Andros. Welcome. We got about 10 minutes left here. So we got to, we got to get moving. Sorry for the delay folks. That's right. But uh, John, I want to ask you a little bit about the journals. Um, so you have the, you have the podcast journal, you have the mastery journal, you have uh, was it the business journal? Um, but the freedom, you have the freedom journey journal, the mastery journal, the podcast journal. So were those started after the podcast? Um, is that, is that something that you, you started after the show was started or is that something you had going ahead of time? Um, Tell me a little bit about the, the genesis of that whole thing. So about three years after launching the podcast, I asked my audience, what are you struggling with? And they told me what they were struggling with, their obstacles and their challenges. And one of the biggest things that kept coming up over and over again was, John, how do we set and accomplish meaningful goals? I know a lot of your listeners, a lot of your guests that you have on are doing that. How do we do that? And so I said, let me create the solution. So back in 2016, we created the Freedom Journal, accomplish your number one goal in 100 days. We did the exact same question and answer for our next concept, which was the Mastery Journal, and the same thing for the Podcast Journal. And that's what it's all about, is asking your audience what they're struggling with and then creating the solution for them in the form of a product or a service or a community. And that's what we did. Yeah, it seems like a, that's been a pretty nice source of revenue for you. Um, now I want to ask you this cause, uh, I know you had mentioned something that you knew the guy that started Gimlet, it looked like in the, uh, in the last income report. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, well, I, I know that Spotify has purchased anchor. They purchased Gimlet. Um, they just purchased another Parcast. one last, what was it? Parcast. Yeah. Yeah. Parcast. So what, what do you think is Spotify going to get in the competition with iTunes? Do you think they is already that, are? They're already in competition. They're already really chomping up massive percentage of, of iTunes lead. And they're already winning in a lot of countries, not the United States, but a lot of countries. And they're going to continue to do that because Spotify sees, hey, people come on to Spotify and they listen to one song and it's called inactive listening. They listen to a song and then they go off. With podcasting, they come on, they press play on Entrepreneurs on Fire, and they listen to 45 minutes. Wow. And they're actively listening. They're engaged with that content. And that's a much more valuable earball for Spotify than you're, than you're just music listener. So, Now, are there, are there any, uh, any strategies for growing your audience on Spotify that differ than like iTunes? Nope. The strategy is just make mm -hmm. a better podcast. Create better <laughs> content. And people might start listening to you. Good stuff. Andros, you have a question there? Yeah, I, I just wonder, like, uh, how, how do you find, uh, like, like your experience with podcasting? I mean, for, for me, I find it uh, such a more intimate form of media with people. Uh, how do you find that people receive it over other types of media that, that uh, are kind of out there or that you've been involved with? So I think that podcasting can be special in a way because it's targeted it's on demand and it's free. So people are choosing what they want to listen to, when they want to listen to it, and when they want to stop and pick it back up again, and they're not paying for it. So there's kind of this feeling of reciprocity there as well of like, wow, I'm getting this for free and it's great content and I'm enjoying it and I'm choosing to listen to it and I like it. You know, with radio, it's like, it's free of course, but you're kind of being pushed whatever they're pushing on you at the time. So podcasting, you just kind of have this 
feeling of intimacy where you're literally going for a run or you're folding laundry or you're driving your car to work and you're choosing to listen to this host or this interview or this true crime story, like whatever it might be. And it's just very much active listening and that people kind of become engaged with, just like you're engaged with reading a book or watching a show on television. And that's kind of what podcasting is. So I think it is a very intimate form that people really do enjoy and, and, and feel like they get to know those people who are speaking. Like I have people who have no idea what I look like because I don't do audio, I don't do video shows, but they've listened to hundreds, if not thousands of hours of me interviewing other people and talking into the microphone and doing X, Y, and Z. And they'll come up to me at a, at a, at a conference and be like, oh, this is what you look like whatever, it doesn't matter. Cause I feel like I know you, like, I feel like you're my friend. And that's just a very interesting dynamic. Yeah. I saw you over at uh, traffic and conversions last year, not this year, but last year you were there. So I kind of knew what you looked like because of that. That gave me, that gave me the hint. <laughs> uh, now I want to ask you about the affiliate links. Um, are, are you, I mean, uh, you're making a good deal of money on affiliate links and, and uh, are you, and you specialize in kind of an audible and click funnels. Now are those promoted exclusively through the podcast and through your website, like eofire.com or do you have other um, sources of promotion for those? Are those also featured in your courses or like where, where yeah, are they're you featured driving? in our courses and all of our email newsletters as well. If anybody ever reached out to me on social media and asks about products or services or tools or tactics that I use and it's applicable, then I'll drop my affiliate link in there for that as well. Like right now I use a, a great tool called Splashio for all my Instagram videos, all my YouTube videos, all my Facebook videos. And people are like, oh, wow, that's a beautiful video. And like, it has a transcription and the flames are going and they're like, what do you use? And I'll be like, eofire.com slash splashio. And like, that's an affiliate link. So um, yeah, we put it everywhere we can, everywhere it's applicable. We just uh, make it happen. We'll have to go buy that right now. Right now. <laughs> so, I, so, so I'm wondering about like, what would you, how would you, uh, I'm wondering about your entire funnel, like as far as like generating income, because obviously for those of you out there who maybe run your own podcast, podcasting does not, believe it or not, bring in a ton of money. For him so, so what is your, per, like your, your whole, uh, how do you, how do you make money from doing podcasting? How would you recommend that? What would you advise someone who was starting a podcast, maybe, uh, you know, just was starting out, how would you, what would be the path for someone like that? Well, the path I would say is to go to eofire.com slash income. And at that page, you can look at our last 68 monthly income reports where we detail out how we've made over $15 million just through podcasting, through the podcast itself, through courses, through affiliates, through sponsorships, through all the different venues. Cause that is just a roadmap. That's a roadmap that we've used over the past seven years and 2,100 episodes. And it's a roadmap that a lot of people can use uh, for what they're doing. So whether they want to coach or whether they want to run a mastermind, whether they want to have sponsors or affiliates or create their own products and services, whatever they might want to do, that's all through podcasting. But the biggest thing that I always come back to is you need to ask your audience in a one-to-one -one manner, what is your biggest struggle right now? And listen to what they share. And then you decide which one of the struggles you want to create the solution for in the form of a product or a service or a community. And you create that thing. So as a podcast, what you're doing is you're building an audience, you're building a community, the community, the community itself, that's really how you're going to monetize. Everything you do is because of your listeners, your community, people that are following you. So that's the real vehicle. Very cool. So let me ask you about the, I want to go a little deeper on the advertising for podcasting. Cause um, I know, well, we got two minutes, so we can't go too deep. All right, not too deep, but we, I know that you, uh, you did 59,000. Tell me, are you doing like, are the deals that you do, are they CPM based or are you, are you doing like private deals where they all just uh, CPM based or all CPM yeah. based? Okay. So what kind of CPM do you get? I'm just curious. Cause you know, I'm getting $25 sometimes. So <laughs> yeah, typically between 42 to 60 is my range. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, I, I can aspire to something now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the fact that you have uh, sponsors is great. Andres, you want to give a, a last short question? Uh, I just want to thank you uh, for, for showing up on our uh, humble little podcast here. Welcome. And uh, anything else, where, where can we find you? Uh, where, what's the best place to get all, like, just so our listeners know where we, uh, they can land on uh, your page, everything, anything you want to pitch, anything you want to plug right now. Well, thank you for having me. And for uh, myself, everything happens at eofire.com. We have Great free courses for entrepreneurs on how to podcast, how to create funnels, how to accomplish goals, 
all at eofire.com. And of course, I'd love if you checked out my podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, because we're working hard over there to get better every single day. Nice. Nice. And how many of these, how many of these do you do a day? I mean, when you do, when you spend a day like this, how many of these do you do? Uh, between 20 to 25. Okay. Good luck. Have, uh, enjoy the next one. Thanks for being on our show, John. Uh, a pleasure. John Lee Dumas, ladies and gentlemen. John Lee Dumas. Thanks, guys. Peace. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. What an interview. What an interview. Thank you, John, for spending that time with us here on Marketing Geeks. We're not worthy. You make our show look so much better than it really is. <laughs> I'm glad that we were able to share our seven listeners with you because I hope that at least one of them hasn't heard of you before. And then we can at least, you know, one of those seven listeners can go on and buy some of your affiliate stuff and make you like five bucks. <laughs> that's a very, that's a very minimum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very minimum. I, I set low expectations. All right. <laughs> so what else you got for me? So Andros, uh, you, you told me yeah. that you had posted something on Reddit and you had, you had basically been, uh, kind of doing like an ask me anything kind of uh, thread over there. And you got, you got some questions. Is that right? You would tell me, tell me what happened. Well, tell me about it. Well, what I, what I, well, what it is, is there's, there's, uh, there's, uh, people are posting some marketing questions, uh, around, uh, just marketing in general, uh, different questions, and uh, I am more than obliged to uh, answer said questions. Uh, some of these uh, questions, said questions. So uh, this one, uh, this particular question has uh, is uh, one that I saw, and I thought, oh, this is this is definitely uh, within our realm of quote, expertise. Is it, uh, is it multiple choice or true false? Cause I can get those right. So SEO wizards, what is the best resource to learn <laughs> SEO free and paid? What do you got? Ooh, best resource for SEO. Um, I mean, SEO is such an evolving thing. I mean, the best resource is to go directly to the source, go to Google and start reading their documents, take their AdWords course. Um, I really believe that you need to get the most up-to-date information and that's probably at the source of where you're doing it. Plus I think that experience and forcing yourself to start working in it and playing around, testing the waters, seeing what works, what doesn't work is going to get you much farther than just trying to watch a bunch of courses and not taking action. Yeah. So I always say it, imperfect action wins every time. If you don't know what you're doing, at least you're doing something. So uh, if uh, you go to, uh, just go to Google and Google, uh, Google Digital Garage. So this is the answer that I uh, supplied. Go to Google Digital Garage. There is a, uh, Google actually has its own course that they offer. So go and take that course. You can get certified. I also recommend the uh, lynda.com, AKA LinkedIn Learning yeah. course on digital marketing, uh, but the very best, and, and Moz, uh, Moz.com has a really good uh, beginner's guide to SEO. So uh, they can, they, they'll tell you how to do it. But really, I mean, the main thing is, uh, the main thing is SEO changes so often that you can't really get it. You can't really learn it from books if you want the latest of what's, what's changed because Google is constantly updating. Everything is, uh, is moving fast. So yeah, the online courses are the way to go. Lynda.com or LinkedIn Learning, they're the same company. Um, they vet their professionals very thoroughly. They only take the best um, to put those courses up there. So I know that that is a great course if you want to learn SEO from the bottom up. And I think they have a few uh, different versions. I think they have an advanced one too. Um, so yeah, those are great resources, Andros. I agree. But the, uh, the very best way to learn SEO is just to do it. Like, like get a client... Uh, you know, just talk your way into uh, a like a, a small client, maybe a small like store around your area, and uh, just give them a deal and just do it. Don't ever do anything for free, but uh, yeah. but just well, do it. I like Yoast. I like the websites Hrefs and SEM Rush. 
Uh, but I mean, they all cost money. So, you know, but if you want to do it for. Yeah, but they all have blogs that are also very good. Yes, they have blogs. And if you write a blog on your website, you will magically increase your ranking on SEO anyway, as long as it's original content, you're not plagiarizing. That's right. And you'll be better looking. Ask your lawyer if you don't know what plagiarizing is. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. What do you got for me, man? Well, I don't know. That's the only question you have. I want another question. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, is it worth it to develop an Instagram landing page app? Instagram landing page app. Can you explain that? I don't know. Yeah, I have no question. idea what that question is. I think it's an I, Instagram landing page. Like I, I understand like, but I don't understand why the word app at the end, like an Instagram landing page. So you basically have a landing page that's driving people to your Instagram profile to build your following, I would assume, or you're sending people from your Instagram to a landing page to capture their email address. I don't, I don't understand the question. Um, landing pages are always good to turn um, subscribers or followers into actual contacts in your database. So, uh, for instance, uh, if you go to marketing geeks podcast right now, marketing geeks, podcast.com, I actually have put something up right now and it is, uh, it has a link there where you can opt in and you can get updates on the marketing geek show. And we're going to start emailing every single time we drop an episode, we're going to send an email out so that you guys know about it. Every time that we announce a webinar, we'll be able to communicate you as long as you're a subscriber to our email list. And every now and then we may have an incredible offer to share. So subscribe right now, go to marketinggeekspodcast.com because we too want you as a contact on our list. That means I better get the, the website ready, huh? No, it's already up, dude. I, I took, uh, I took, initiative. Oh, That's you did. I took initiative really? and I put it up. Yeah. Just go to, go to it right now. It's no way. Okay. It okay. is. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. You got to do this while we're on the air. You haven't even seen it yet. Okay. Hold on. Whoa. Look at that, dude. That's a, that's a mighty damn good looking site. Did you make that? That's right. I did. Really? What'd you make that in? Click uh, Oh, of course. Of course. And be sure to click our affiliate link for ClickFunnels because John Lee Dumas makes a lot of money on it and we want you to You know what? Too. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, <laughs> but I did, I did build that site in ClickFunnels. Um, if somebody, oh, here, here's what I can do to make, to incentivize our ClickFunnels audience here. If you use our affiliate link, which I'm going to put uh -huh. in the show notes um, for, and you get a free 14 day trial on ClickFunnels, but if you use it, you have to, you'd have to end up purchasing it to make this whole thing work. But if you purchase it for at least, you know, at least a month or so, I could send you the template of our Marketing Geeks page. So I can actually share that over to you if you use our link. So, but you'd have to at least purchase a month with ClickFunnels to, uh, because there has to be some sort of uh, financial incentive. Yeah, right? I guess so. But you know what I just did? I, I signed up for the newsletter. What'd I signed you do? up for the newsletter. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Nice. I think we have two subscribers, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think we could probably get at least two or three of our seven listeners to sign up. But uh, good job, man! You uh, you 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 uh, you did it. Thank you. Well, you know what? Look, I, I, I gotta I gotta I gotta express something because um, uh, I've had uh, I've had a, a very chaotic year. As for those of you who personally know me, and uh, and I have to say that. Uh, I haven't, I haven't been on task with a lot. Like the things that I needed to be on task with, I've really been on task with. So I feel really good about that. But then there's like this whole other sort of world of things that I haven't been quite a hundred percent on. And, uh, and, and, it, and part of it has to do with, uh, you know, just bandwidth. Right. Uh, so I, I, I just want to be uh, authentic here and I want to apologize for anyone who's reached out to me and I haven't got back to them right away. And, uh, and I also want to thank you for taking the initiative to, uh, you know, put the, uh, put the website, cause I, I, that, that was actually my task to do. And I, I haven't done it for like months. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I've had a lot going on, man. Uh, and I, I, I love the show. I really do. But it, it uh, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's hard. We live in a day and age where there's so much going on. It's hard to really, you know, keep track of everything. 
So I, I, uh, I just want to uh, express that I am, uh, I, I want to do better. That's, that's what I'm saying. I want to do better. Well, that's, that's touching. I'm very touched. Yeah. I, I, are you? Really? I just, I just like was totally authentic and you're, you're, you're belittling my, my authenticity. Thanks. I'm yeah. not. I, I, yes. It was touching. That was yeah. good. No, I, I'm somewhat belittling. Yeah. I'm somewhat belittling, okay. but not really. No, that was authentic. That was right. that was good. No, that was good. And that's and I understand. And I understand where you're coming from. And I understand priorities. You have a job, and it kind of uh, when you have when you have like the immediate tasks that pay the bills quickly, those tend to take priority. And I, I'm well aware I procrastinate worse than anybody on the planet. Um. So I I I relate. <laughs> I'm human. Are you Are you sure about that? Well, I'm not sure because I could be a computer program instead of a simulation. And I definitely think that's a possibility. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's a possibility too, that you are a <laughs> simulation. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I could be a simulation too. Or uh, you know what else is possible is that uh, I'm just in some sort of home somewhere in a straight jacket and uh, you're an orderly feeding me medication or just a voice inside of my head. And I'm just banging my head against the wall going, marketing! <laughs> Bonk. I mean, that could <laughs> bonk, bonk. That could definitely, that could definitely be, you know. Well, I mean, it's kind of that way. I mean, you really, we're, we're, we're both kind of a little crazy here. We're both just speaking into a microphone, talking to yeah. seven people. So yeah, it's kind of weird. <sighs> it's <laughs> kind of true. And maybe at this, it, it, and I think actually uh, by this moment in the show, I think we uh, probably have less than some people listening because I think people just skip this episode. <laughs> All together, uh, but no. In all seriousness, we have more questions. Let's. I want more yeah. questions. Let's keep. Let's get some like rapid fire. Give me, let's do a lightning round. Give me some okay. questions. What is the hardest part about working with influencers? I would say the hardest part is the the ones that want all blue M and M's. It just annoys yeah. me, and I get it. I mean, they just want to make sure you're reading the instructions. But you know what? You don't need all blue M and M's. Why not green? The, Why not the hardest, the biggest. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, the uh, I actually like this answer from uh, Pussy Popping Bitch at uh, on Reddit. That's actually the real username checks out. The biggest problem with, uh, uh, is the lack of professionalism from some of the influencers and the inability to understand how we marketers need to pay them. Some of them are not realistic for the reach uh, engagement they provide. Now, this is true. I think that, that, uh, and some of them have fake, I mean, there's also like fake mm -hmm. engagement too and fake, well, not really fake engagement, but fake reach. I mean, how many people, how many Instagram people have like 10,000 fake followers or a hundred thousand fake followers. So, I mean, if, if they're not getting actual engagement with comments that are not from bots, cause you could, if you look at those, you could tell yeah. if a comment's from a bot or yeah. not, at least I can, I have that ability. That's something I can detect robot or not robot. That's one of my special abilities. And, uh, so if, uh, if the comments are real and they have a hundred thousand people and they have a lot of comments, then yeah, maybe I'll invest in them. But yeah, there's a lot of these, uh, micro influencers that are, I was reading that they uh -huh. were trying to get into hotels recently. And one of the big hotel chains just started shutting down all the influencers like last week. Yeah. And just saying, like, no, we're done. We're done. We don't care if you post. Like, you're not getting a deal anymore. Yeah, and and this is this is kind of uh, uh, a lot of marketers. Uh, in fact, there was a big scandal over at Burning Man uh, recently because the um, uh, a lot of influencers were basically trying to trade for goods and services with their influencing uh, clout. And uh, this, according to the Burning Man organization, went against the code of ethics. Now, if you are going to use an influencer, that this is actually brings up a really good point. Uh, make sure that they are not uh, doing a, uh, a scam where they're basically uh, boosting up their their influencing cloud with uh, with bots. Because in the way that you can tell this is if, uh, as Justin said, go into the comment section, see who's really engaging in their in their content. If it's just smiley faces and thumbs ups and that's or like, it. Or, or like great post. Like they'll have a post that says great post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, really vet your, your influencer. And I, I, I'm a, I'm kind of against influencer marketing anyway, just because I, I think it's kind of dumb. I really do. I mean, it's, it's like, uh, 
Well, you, it, I think it works though. It, it does work to some degree. And, and you know, the, one of the best successes I had with any campaign was where I took content from, a, from an influencer, uh, for a beauty brand I was working with and I turned it into a Facebook ad. And then, uh, that Facebook ad I told just share on Instagram. So I basically turned it into an Instagram ad and we had more engagement with that ad than it was anything else. And, um, and, yeah, I, so I, I mean, it does work, but I, I just hope that that type of thing goes away because, you know, the other, the other part of it is, is if you are uh, an, an influencer, a lot of times you, you know, that it's a very few influencers that actually get paid a lot of money for posting stuff. Most people don't. And so what you're doing is you're working for these giant corporations that end up raking in tons of money uh, based on a post and, and they're not really paying people. And, uh, you know, I think that artists need to be paid. I really do. Well, a lot of people call themselves influencers that are broke. Uh -huh. So I, I don't call myself an influencer and I, I probably have more money than some of the other influencers, mm -hmm. but, uh, no, there really are, there really are. Like I, I've been seeing some, uh, posts on Facebook recently about like, uh, there was one guy that was just making a joke about like how many, he was shocked to find out how many of these uh, so-called influencers that are like taking pictures in front of these, you know, rented private jets. And I guess there's a company that lets you actually take pictures in front of private jets without actually flying mm -hmm. them, which I should have thought of that. I should have started that company. I know. Well, you know, it's, I want to, I want to buy a Lamborghini just to have people take pictures in front of it and be like, put this on Facebook. You, why don't we, why don't we uh, take a video in front of a mansion and tell people how rich they can be, put it on YouTube. Well, I mean, you know what though, he, that, that guy, he's actually got the money now, but he inspired an entire new generation to copy that. And none of them have that money, but they, they pretend they do pretend at least Ty Lopez now has the money. I don't think, I don't know if he did when he started doing that. It might've been one of those fake until you make it most likely. Um, but, he, but now I, I'm, I'm sure that he is doing quite well. Um, so I, I can, I could at least, uh, but I mean, except that the, all those ads were in a rented mansion that was confirmed through <laughs> multiple sources well, and I'm sure that I've got the money. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely a thousand air, definitely a thousand air. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. I'm a hundred air at this point. I'm, I'm saving up to rent a mansion for one day just so we can film the marketing geeks commercial <laughs> and do it right. So. Now we're not going to, I mean, we're obviously going to have like our cell phone as a camera because we can't afford, we can't afford a good camera after spending all our money on the mansion rental. I mean, if we, how much does it cost to rent a red? Like how much would it cost us to rent a red for a day on? Uh, well, a, a good red person we could probably get for about 500 bucks a day. Like an average, an average red person. And that Maybe includes the camera? Yeah. And they'll, they'll, okay. And then we get the footage and all that too? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we could do that. So five hundred bucks, the mansion we can get for what, like fifteen hundred for the day, or one thousand maybe. Even? Maybe I, I mean, it's We're, doable. we could do this. It's, we could do this. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think that when you're onto something, man. The next question. This is from yes. Stephen Mercer. <laughs> this is the worst episode ever. This <laughs> is definitely the worst episode we have ever done. But this question is pretty good. What is the best Good. ad platform, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter for ROI? For ROI. That What's stands that? for return on your investment. Oh, oh, that's what that means? So Instagram works well for beauty and fashion brands, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Facebook works for uh, almost everything, uh, but uh, I, 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 don't, I don't feel that it's, it's, it's as good as it used to be. Uh, Twitter ads, uh, don't generally work and YouTube ads are good for brand awareness. And, uh, you know, just, especially if you have a product that you're, you're showing off or, you know, you're selling your system or a, uh, maybe a digital curriculum of some sort that, you know, YouTube is definitely good for that. Uh, LinkedIn ads are, uh, I have not tried them, but, uh, you know, I find that you can get away with, uh, uh, a lot just by posting on LinkedIn, but uh, I'm about to launch a LinkedIn ad campaign. So I will let you know how it goes. Yeah. My understanding with LinkedIn is you just need to have a bigger budget because it's more expensive, but again, you're getting a different audience. So if you're, if you're targeting very specific professionals and you want to target by job title, um, you're getting the best targeting on LinkedIn, the most accurate, I would say, because on Facebook, people could just type whatever they want. Or if they have that job, they might not even list their job on Facebook. But on, on LinkedIn, 
everyone is putting their real job in there and you're going to get more accurate targeting. Um, if you're targeting business professionals, um, if you're targeting business owners, you're going to get a little bit more accurate on your targeting there, but your CPM and your CPC, so that's your cost per thousand impressions and your cost per click are going to be more expensive than both Facebook and Google AdWords. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, I have a question here. Now, now wait, 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 because my new favorite platform, which we haven't used yet is Spotify, Spotify ads, baby. And I want to look into Pandora too. I heard Pandora actually has a pretty good ad platform too. How do you know it's your, it's your favorite ad platform if you haven't used it? Because it's going to work. <laughs> That's why. I've looked into the future, Andros, and I see big things. It's either that or I'm dead because I just see a flash of light. <laughs> Maybe it's a simulation. It's a glitch in the simulation. <laughs> the simulation ended. How after that, and the simulation came to an end. I was wondering, like, if I, I mean, so like if AI were to, co- yeah. if it were to take over and, um, and kill us all, like Elon says, I mean, should we even worry about that? Because if we die in the in the simulation, I mean, what are the rules here? Are they like in the Matrix where you die in the simulation, you die for in for real life? Or or is it that when you die in the simulation, you wake up in the real world? That's the question that I want to What if know. you die in the simulation and you wake up in another simulation? But it's just a shittier simulation. Well, I mean, that's that's a very real possibility considering we're about to make our own simulation here on Earth. We could be like eight simulations deep or more. We could be infinite simulations Man, deep, bro. You got to do ayahuasca with me someday. That's all I can say. <laughs> how many <laughs> simulations deep are we? Now, how is, is that answering the question? One, are we answering the two, question pretty well with this? Three. <laughs> three. Um, three. Three simulations deep. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, In this simulation, <laughs> Donald Trump became the president. It's, it's, it's kind of like the age-old <laughs> question, how many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? And I know the answer to this question. And what is the answer? I do. It's six. Six, yeah. It's six. Yeah, because uh, it took me six roads before I walked past somebody and they went, hey, man. Um, Very profound stuff here on Marketing Geeks today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, This is from A. Merker J. Uh, How to track competitors? Is there a source or tool for online business? And uh, the answer, I'm actually going to defer to uh, Trev Cool who said uh, they, let, they, they gave the following answer, and I actually really like this answer, so instead of answering myself, I'm going to defer to someone else. Uh, YouGov, which is a, uh, uh, a consumer uh, properly data in, uh, uh, that uh, has levels of comparison to competing brands, so YouGov. Uh, Google Trends, which I like a lot. Legalizer, uh, Sightliner, Answer the Public, Never heard of that one. Uh, Flanks, spelled P-H-L-A-N-X. Uh, hashtag, I don't know, never heard of this. Hashtag a fly, similar web, shares count, spyfu, talos, page speed insight, nibbler, uh, uber suggest, <laughs> market finder, and open link profiler. Most of these I've never even heard of. Yeah, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy this list provided uh by this person and well i i have a few that i want to oh, add please. that i use please. uh number well number one is uh sem rush or sem rush however you pronounce uh-huh. it i don't know for sure um but that's a, this is a great tool for competitive analysis because you could type in a domain or a keyword and if you type in a domain it's going to show you uh, what keywords you rank for the highest. And it'll also show you what similar websites rank for similar um, keywords. And those, by definition in SEMrush, those are considered your competitors um, because they are competing for the same keywords. So this is an SEO competitor. And uh, you can also type in a keyword though, and you can actually see uh, who's ranking the highest, who are the companies that are ranking. And you can even look at other people's Google AdWords. So they will actually pull up a list of all the ads that that company has run over the past year. And you can actually look and read the ad copy. You can see what keywords they used in each ad. So it's pretty, pretty advanced stuff there. I think it's really cool. Now for social media, uh, a great, great tool is BuzzSumo. It's a little bit pricey, uh, but BuzzSumo is as good as it gets because what it, what it is, is you could type in any subject 
and it'll tell you um, the mo it'll it'll link you to the most shared articles on that subject. And um, I mean, so it's great for uh, for generating content, but it also lets you know who. So who is generating the most uh, shared content? And you can lo go look at them if it's if it's something that you're wanting to rank for. There's your competitor, the people that are generating the most shared social uh, content on the web. And I did look up, uh, um, I just looked up Phalanx Andros, uh, P-H-L-A-N-X, and it's an influencer huh. engagement calculator. That's kind of cool. So if I type uh, in, what's your, what's your Twitter handle, Andros? I don't have one. No, actually, uh, just Andros actually, I, I have, you don't um, have a Twitter one. Uh, 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 what is it? Starchild Web Dev. Well, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at mine. Oh, it's, oh, they want my influencer. I mean, they want my, um, not influencer. They want my, oh. they want my Instagram. They want my Instagram account. So wait, wait. So go ahead and talk for a minute, but I'm going to, I'm going to pull, I'm going to find my Instagram account and I'm going to rank myself and just see how low <laughs> I score here. I want to see if I score above zero. While you're doing that, I'm going to, uh, this question is from a uh, slanted version. Uh, who asks, what's the best digital marketing skills to learn in 2019 and 2020? And uh, for me, I would say the best, uh, the best kind of skills that you need to know are definitely storytelling. You need to tell a compelling story. Uh, you need to be able to uh, take the brand and not just showcase the brand or you know, the business or uh, the, the personal thing that you're doing, you need to really tell a story around what it is and make it a compelling story. As uh, you know, as, as we've talked about on this program before, every single uh, brand has to consider themselves as a media company. So, by so Andrew, so yeah, I, I got to chime in here because this is too important. I, I put in my influencer or my Instagram handle, which is justin.m.womack. Uh -huh. And I have an engagement rate of 2.07%. And my average interactions are 22 likes and one comment. So my comments suck, but my likes are pretty decent. And uh, uh, you know what? I'm on, uh, I'm outscoring Kim Kardashian, at least today. Really? And that's all that matters. Did she not? And I'm getting uh, crushed. Did she not post? I don't know. Maybe she's lazy on Instagram. Maybe she's just being lazy. <laughs> but like Logan Paul's got 6.22%. I mean, I don't even know. Uh, they probably... The thing is, I don't even have the comments are so much more important than likes. Like likes don't even mean anything. So even though I'm at 2.07%, I would take that with a grain of salt because I believe in comments much more than I believe in likes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't even use Instagram nearly as much as I use uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, absolutely. Well, I, I, I would, uh, uh, I would say that, um, you know, I, I actually went down the Instagram rabbit hole at one point where I, really tried to grow like an Instagram following and I did all the things that they say to do. And I got to tell you, it, it just to get like a little blip in the map, it is exhausting. You got to spend a lot of time on doing it. And uh, I, I've, I've read uh, articles with Instagram uh, influencers who say that sometimes just to get one shot, they've got to work like hours and hours and hours just to get one shot. And uh, I don't have that much time, man. I got, you know, I got the things I got to do, like make this podcast. Yeah. That's right. So that's very, very right. I had to do, uh, did I tell you, so uh, you were telling your tax sob story like a week uh -huh. or two ago. I want to tell you my tax sob oh, story. Please. So today is, uh, as we record this, today is April 15th. This is tax uh -huh. day. And so last year, you know, I, I filed jointly last year. Um, I'm married. We did not have a kid last year though. And um, we received a refund. Uh, I think it was around 1500 or so. Maybe it was, it was decent, but not great. Uh, this year I filed taxes and I got a bill for $4,500. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but the, I guess the biggest thing is I, I, I have incorporated as of 2019, but in 2018, I was not incorporated. And as an unincorporated sole proprietorship, some of the right, they took away a lot of the write-offs that were available in the prior years. And it's a really, it's really to your advantage to incorporate under the new uh, Trump tax laws. Uh, otherwise you're missing out. And that's the same thing for a lot of employees because they're not, uh, employees are also losing a lot of write-offs. So if you're an employee or you're a uh, sole proprietor, you're kind of in trouble. But if you are under an LLC or a corporation, you're in better shape. 
as far as my that's what my accountant tells me anyway. So I hope that's true. Well, I, I so I opened an LLC this year, and I'm uh, I'm hoping that pays off for the next tax year. But forty five hundred bucks, I'm gonna have to do installments. I don't I don't want to pay that in a lump sum. Yeah, man. Well, uh, you know what your problem is is you're just not billionaire enough. I know. It's all right. I can make that back. I can make that back in like three days. Like I just saw John Lee Dumas is averaging about two thousand dollars a day in ads. I mean fifty nine thousand a month divided by thirty. I mean, that, if, if it was 60,000, that'd be, th- uh, be 2,000 a day. Almost. So it was almost there. So all I got to do is, is, is just do like three podcasts or something. You know, if we could, if we could actually make a million dollars per podcast, uh, we can... Are you listening, seven listeners? Because all you got to do is go to our Patreon page. Give us a and million. if each of you seven listeners donate $100,000... No, that's, that's not even in, no, that's not even enough. It's only 700,000. We could do, you got to donate more than that. We could do, uh, <laughs> we could do like one or two shows and then say goodbye. How about 150,000 per listener? That'll put us, uh, that'll put us in good shape or, uh, well, actually let's just go, let's just go for broke. 200,000 per listener, $1.4 million per episode. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll even take that per month. We're not even going to be that greedy. It won't be per episode. We'll just take that as a monthly contribution, $200,000. What do you think? I think it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. I have Thanks, solved man. the problem. What would I do without you? Um, <laughs> to, to, to continue with the question, best digital marketing skills to learn in 2019, uh, 2020. Content creation, I would, I would learn how to create easy content and get it out there. So if you can, if you uh, personally can know a little bit of SEO, how to develop content that is SEO heavy uh, and searchable, how to uh, how to tell engaging stories, I think that's more than than uh, better than most technical skills. But if you can create content, uh, do the campaign, run Google AdWords, uh, double check the the SEO on a website, and do a little website building you will never lack for employment because you're doing the work of basically three or four people at that point. Yeah. And and in the same regard, I think learning podcasting is a great tool for anyone getting started because it's a awesome medium. It's a growing medium. And, and and it's, it also falls into the content category. So I think that having a podcast, if you think long-term, which if you if you if you're thinking as a business owner, you should be thinking long term. You're not going to make a ton of money in the first probably year to even one to three to five years with your podcast. I think um, you can make some decent money. I mean, as of as of this month, I mean we we're we're making. Last month we made about a little over three hundred dollars in ad revenue for the month. So it's not like we're crushing it. That's enough to pay our intern for coffee. And uh, that, that gives us, what does that give us under? It's like, I, I guess that gives us like $10 a day, but we have to split it. We have to split it. So it's $5 a day. So I can go get like a cup of coffee and a donut. And then Andros. Um, I can get a cup of coffee and a strip bottle. Like, you can get some French fries with mayonnaise. Or, or I can go to the local <laughs> coffee shop and get a pre roll joint. So there you go. For five bucks? Yeah, totally. Five bucks a day. So you can go, I guess you can get a lot of, I mean, yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't. Big things, man. I, I, Big I, I, things. I, I, I don't smoke anywhere near that anymore ever now. Cause you know why? Cause I'm trying to be responsible, man. That's, that's just the way it goes. You are so responsible. <laughs> You're responsible for a lot of upset in the world. I, I kind of am, but uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's all my fault. Uh, geek news. What do you got for me? Um, something called Star Wars dropped a trailer on us just the other day and spoiler alerts. Well, not really the title of Star Wars, which is public news. It's probably all over the, I think it was all over the news is the rise of Skywalker. And, uh, and then at the end of the trailer, there's a, there's a familiar laugh. It's a familiar laugh. And, and Kathleen Kennedy confirmed today that the laugh is Palpatine which is kind of a weird thing that they would confirm that. I think it would be better to leave that to ambiguity. Uh, I don't think we needed to know that Palpatine was in the movie, but, um, but that's, that's apparently what was confirmed today on, uh, on the news. I will, am going to file that under I for, I don't care about Star Wars anymore. I'm sorry. I'm, um, I'm jaded. I, you know, it's like, look, let's, let's be honest about this. 
there has been, uh, this will be the, uh, what, the 13th Star Wars film at this point? Uh, yeah. Sounds about right. So this will be nine plus Rogue One plus Han Solo plus. Was but, the, one? but the but the point <laughs> is, uh, the, you know, uh, there's the Star Wars holiday special. Uh, the point is, it, oh, yeah, the Ewok, the Ewok special, the Ewok special. classic, so classic movie. W- w- if we really break it down, you line all those movies up. There was one that was excellent, a couple that were okay, the rest of them just they're not good, man. They're they're just well, I mean, Episode Five. And episode four are both very good. Uh, That's it. Yeah, definitely. And and well, I mean, episode five is great. Episode yeah, five is that great. is Empire episode Strikes Back. And and uh, yes. but but you know, it's like a shame on you, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, for a, a greenlighting a trilogy of films where you start the first one and you have no idea where it's going to go. Shame on you. So. That is so yeah. dumb. So, so now, dumb. Now they basically are, yeah, are I mean, like trying to cobble yeah. together the mess that they made. And, and I mean, are they retconning? Are they going to retcon half the shit? Or like, what? I mean, what's the uh, solution here? Or is Skywalker just a very powerful ghost now? I mean, it sounds like I, I think if Palpatine's in this movie, that they're going to make Palpatine or Ray will be Palpatine's daughter. I think that's the case. That's why she's in the movie. I actually, here, here's my prediction. This is, this, this would be the thing that makes the most sense is that, uh, when, uh, Obi-Wan went to, in, in episode two, he goes to the clone factory. Uh, he leaves some of his DNA and one of his clones is Ray. So, so Ray is actually uh, a clone of Obi-Wan in female form. Yeah. Which I think that's what they were doing. I mean, I think that was like what J.J. Abrams intended all along. And then like Ryan, Ryan Rian Johnson came along and just like took shit on it. Because even in like, remember that flashback scene from episode seven, like mm-hmm. the, uh, the Force Awakens? They even use, they, they, they have a thing where um, they actually brought in Ewan McGregor on, during that flashback to, to yeah. say like, Ray, Ray. Dude, you captured that precisely. Ray. So... <laughs> Oh, I know that that was me. I mean, that wasn't Ewan McGregor. That was actually me yeah. right there, which is hard to believe. But yeah. that was not a clip of the. Movie. I, uh, I I I just I'm I'm actually I have given up on Star Wars the way I've given up on American politics. I just uh, I will tune in to simply watch the train wreck, but uh, I I have very little hope uh, whatsoever. Oh yeah. Now I mean I I'm gonna I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see it. Of course. Right. I'm gonna see it. I'm not. I didn't see any of these ones uh, in the theater. I, I didn't see any of them twice. I won't. I don't anticipate seeing this one twice. Um, I'll see it though. I'll be there. You know, uh, give it a I, shot it, it, because it's the last one. They're, and they did. They did announce they're going to take a. They're going to take a hiatus from Star Wars after this. They're going to take like at least three years off. Yeah. Well, like. they, I think uh, if even Mark Hamill is like. I think people have Star Wars fatigue. Well, no, no kidding. Uh, I, I, uh, I, but I, I, I mean, look. Yes, everyone's going to go see this movie. It could be. It could be two hours of uh, J.J. Abrams and George Lucas uh, taking turns giving uh, C-3PO a Boston steamer every, you know, just back and, and forth. And what, what is a Boston steamer again? You you're going to have to look it up on Urban Dictionary. And while you're doing that, you can also look up what a dirty surgeon is because I coined that act. <laughs> it's a dirty I did. surgeon. Yeah, is look that, it up, is man. it in the Urban Dictionary? I, did it, it, did is. it make I, it? I invented it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, so other other geek news before I look that up, uh, mm-hmm. the filming has wrapped on DC Comics movie Birds of Prey. Did you even know they were making a movie called Birds of Prey, Andros? The question not. is, do I care about that? Because that's another one where I'm just like, I, oh. like the DC. Oh, let me. Yeah, I don't care. You ready for the subtitle? Please. You ready for the subtitle? I'm, I'm sorry. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Yeah, I'll be I'll be skipping that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh my god, that really is. They have a logo. They have a logo where it says "Birds of Prey," and then like in spray paint, kind of like text, it says like the "And the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn." That's actually the title, the full okay. title. Okay. Well, finally, before we cool. wrap up, well, Margot Robbie's I back. Just wanna, I just want to. Uh, yeah, by the time our listeners hear this, it will already come out. But I just found out that the. Uh, Notre Dame in Paris has uh, burned to the ground, which is. Uh, oh, it did burn to the ground. I saw that yeah, it was on fire earlier today. I didn't know. Um, it, I didn't... It, uh, and, and I just wow. want to uh, express my 
any cause of cause of fire? Is it um, arson or is it, or is it accident? Or my what? guess is God has left the building. He, you know, it's like <laughs> after Who after knows? the Catholic Church, yeah. after everything that's happening in the world, he was just like, you know what? Later, everybody, I'm I'm gonna go hmm. I'm gonna go get a pizza. But uh, I was uh, I was 24 years old. I went to the uh, Notre Dame for the first time, and I stood underneath that thing and. It, the, the amount of history that is in that area is just uh, astounding. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. Oh wow! I just uh, I just pulled up a picture. Of it. Wow. Sad. Sad. Oh, but you crazy. know what? With uh, with all things, all things end, and with each ending comes a new beginning. And with each beginning, uh, Tiger Woods won a Masters. Yeah. Good for him. Only fourteen years. Yeah. It takes 14 years after you have a very public affair to win a master's tournament. Oh, maybe I should That's what we learned start yesterday. playing golf then. <laughs> so I think what happened, well, you know, it's funny. I mean, I, I was going to say what happened is that like Donald Trump took a lot of the brunt away from Tiger. People like kind of forgot like why they hated uh -huh. Tiger because there's like other people, other things that are more important these days. And, but, but it's funny. It's like Tiger plays golf with him though. So he actually is kind of friends with him. So so I, I don't know that that's an accurate theory, but uh, I, I don't think that a lot of people like remember or they don't seem to care about Tiger or care, you know, like they did in the past. Like everyone was like, Meh! like that. Is that how they were? I never did right? that. Meh! That's what that's. It's <laughs> an accurate reproduction of how Meh! most people were. <laughs> oh man, this. <laughs> Oh, 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 here's a new story. As of uh, 25 minutes ago, Donald Trump is to award Tiger Woods the Presidential oh. Medal of Freedom. I well, did not know good. that. Wow, that's a very relevant. That's a very relevant article I just found on that was on CNN <laughs> while uh, while telling that story. You know what? I am. Uh, I'm going to have to end this show before it completely slides off the rails any further. So with that. <laughs> The greatest episode ever recorded is coming to an end. I would just like to apologize to all of our seven listeners for what you just heard. Hey, I think that I think the interview in the beginning was good. That was really great. That's the lead in, and then it just once again, man, we start off with a great, yeah. you know, interview, and uh, you know, it's just it just goes to show you that we're not to be trusted. We need the guests to stay the entire time because if they don't, it just. It's like anarchy. Pure anarchy. It shows you what happens when usually we come like with like, we don't have a plan ever, but we have like a topic. But when we just start recording without even having a topic, things just get weird. Just, they just get weird. Yeah. It's like, we're, we're keeping it real here, folks. And you know what? We appreciate you. And uh, please give us some feedback. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. I, I have great fun doing this. And uh, I love you, man. Yeah. And subscribe, subscribe at marketinggeekspodcast.com. Get on our email list. Let us notify you of future episodes and be around so we can notify you of webinars and what's coming down the pipeline. We love all of our listeners at Marketing Geeks. Stay classy. Stay classy. You got totally uncomfortable when I said I love you, man. You you just said you said yeah, and then you just stay went classy. right on. Stay, stay you know classy. what? I'm gonna remember that. I'll remember that. I'll remember that. Stay classy. Stay classy. <laughs>